Hey all hope you all are doing good I know it's been a while since I posted a video my this year's resolution should be to make more content for you all anyway here are some clips of when we went to Kolkata at my parents place and we decided to go on a trip to the hills we went to Darjeeling Kalimpong and Peeling in Sikkim it was indeed a good break it was also Zain's first vacation Thankfully he was only on milk then so we didn't have much issues we carried our diaper bag with all his essentials like diapers wet wipes change of clothes wash clothes beeps medicines etc and also a flask where we carried hot water and his milk powder in a divided container i'll link it down in the description I also realized that traveling with my elder one who is 7 years was so much easier than Zain obviously and that was when I wanted him to graduate as soon as possible <laughs> North East is famous for its waterfalls and we saw a couple of them. I also found the backpack extremely helpful during our travel. With the backpack it was so easy to carry Zane and also he loved being close to our body and slept comfortably in that. We had to make sure we ride the toy train in Darjeeling which had been in my list for long. Honestly the train ride wasn't what we expected. There were no views or dreamy landscapes. It was in fact a route through the hustling city. <laughs> Nevertheless we all had a good time especially Kaya. We also went to the Darjeeling Zoo because Kaya wanted to. Surprisingly, Zain enjoyed there too. And the second thing on my list was the ropeway. I was super scared, but Kaya was so fascinated with the height and she said, "Mama, it's so much fun." After we got back to Kolkata from the vacation, we flew the very next day back home in Bangalore. And here's a typical foggy morning from Bangalore. Being an avid fan of crocodiles, I got a few of them from Sikkim. I loved the print so much that I had to get them. I got these planters from a local shop near our house in Bangalore. I wanted them to repot few of my plants which had outgrown their old pots. I'm going to wash all of this and let it dry before using them. The plant pots had so much of mud on them that it had to be washed. I also wanted to talk to you about some massage tips that I have used for both of my kids and using it for Zane now. I have noticed a lot of difference on the days that I don't massage him. Infant massage have a lot of benefits. Here's how I do it. I boil coconut oil with some garlic and methi seeds. I start with his chest area, then stomach, then down to the legs. I give bangle strokes on his thighs and then massage his feet well. This massage on his tummy area helps immensely with his bowel regulation. I move from left to right in a half moon shape, gently pressing and sliding your hands in a clockwise motion and using flat palms gently stroke downwards using hand over hand a paddling type motion. Stretching his hands and legs in a cycling motion is a major step while massaging an infant. This tummy down position and massaging on his back really helps to relieve gas. Make sure you give a baby massage when he is not hungry or sleepy. That way they won't cry much and will enjoy the process. Zain was very sleepy so he wasn't in a good mood as you can see.
Guess what? He woke up after a cat nap of 15 minutes only. Though he slept later for more time, but he knew that I had work to do and so decided not to make my life easy. Zain has started solids. I have only introduced few grains in his diet for now. Ragi is a great first food. It's healthy, highly nutritious, and very easy for babies to consume. I am going to wash the whole ragi in water and dry it well, then grind it into a fine powder. I'm laying that on a newspaper in our guest bedroom. That's where we get a good amount of sunlight around this time of the day. Back to the kitchen to prepare lunch. Parth loves rajma. I'm not a big fan, but being with him for the past 12 years, I have developed the taste for it and now seems like I enjoy it too. For today's lunch, I'm going to make palak dal, broccoli alu fry, kurkuri bindi, rajma and raita. Here I'm going to boil the masoor dal first. and then make a paste of onions and green chilies also grind two tomatoes into fine paste for rajma i'll start making the rajma in a pressure cooker i'll add oil to that i'll add few cloves and a bay leaf then i'll add the onion paste and cook for a while and then add ginger garlic paste and then add the tomato puree To that I'll add haldi salt red chili powder jeera and coriander powder and some garam masala To that I'll add the soaked rajma and I'll cook it for 30 minutes or 7 to 8 whistles To a curry I'll add some jeera seeds and dry red chili then to that I'll add the boiled potatoes and fry for a while and then i'll add the broccoli and let it fry for a while before adding the masalas required to the same curry i will add dry red chilies and methi seeds this time and then add the chopped spinach and then add the masala and add the boiled dal to it For kurkure bhindi I will wash the bhindi well and then wipe it dry with a towel. I will slit the bhindi in half and add it to a bowl and then add salt, turmeric, red chili powder, besan and corn flour. Then mix it well and keep aside. I will also make some raita with onions, coriander leaves, jeera powder and red chili powder. Over the years I have understood the importance of planning my finances for a safe and secure future and one of the safest and most reliable ways to do so is by investing in mutual funds. Among the many options available in the market we have started using Grow as it caters to both experienced investors as well as amateurs and I am comparatively new to this world. Grow offers numerous advantages over the traditional way of investing in mutual funds through a fund house where you are required to pay a certain percentage of your returns as a commission to a broker. With Grow, one has an option to invest in mutual funds directly without the intervention of any third-party broker, which means no commission, no hidden costs. 
Some of the features of growth that makes it so attractive are its easy to navigate interface with over 5000 mutual funds where you can start investing with funds as low as 500 using flexible payments options such as UPI. Similarly, it is as easy to redeem your investments directly to your bank account. This platform also has a smart consolidated dashboard that helps you manage, track and compare your investments all in the same place. To start using this platform and invest in mutual funds, all you have to do is log on to grow.in or download the app through the link in the description, provide bank account details online and complete paperless KYC initially after installation. Hope this is helpful and happy investing. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. I'm making Zane's lunch now. In the first month of introducing solids, I was told by my doctor to feed him only twice a day, once in the morning around 10 or so and once in the afternoon around 3 or so. There should be a good amount of gap between both the feeds so that the food gets digested well. By the way, I got this cooker which is of 1 liter capacity and is great for making baby food in very little amount. I highly recommend getting one if you are starting solids for your little one too. Today I'm giving him rice with moong dal, beans and sweet potato. This is his first month of starting solids. From next month there is going to be a lot of changes like more veggies can be included. I can give more types of grains, less purid food etc. I'll make a video on that too. Hope that helps. I'm back to my normal routine of housework. When we are back from a vacation, the laundry seems to be over control. If one lot dries, only to realize there is another lot to be washed and dried. This method of stacking clothes makes it so easy to find anything. I'm a big fan of folding clothes this way which is called the Konmari method of folding. Everything just looks so neat this way. Since Zane started solids, laundry has just doubled up, wash, dry, fold, keep away and repeat. I had to wash our bedding too since we weren't home, the sheets had accumulated dust. I was procrastinating doing it. Since the time of my pregnancy, our home isn't taken care of like it used to for obvious reasons. And now with Zane's growing needs, it seemed more difficult. At least I try to do the basic cleaning as much as possible. We had put Kaya's name on the door, but the gum wasn't strong enough and it started falling out one by one. 
First the K fell and then the A fell and now only A and Y is left. Due to all the chaos going on, I am not able to put this up. I also wanted to change Kaya's bedding too since she sleeps in her room these days. She doesn't object or mind sleeping all by herself now. I guess time does it all. It's very difficult to put a fitted sheet in her bunk bed. That's the only challenge we face with buying the bed. Otherwise, we are quite happy with it. It has saved so much of space in the room since it has a desk below. Kaya got this pillowcase as a return gift. This is basically a doodle art where the kids can color on it with the color provided with the kit. And it says it's also washable. And the drill of laundry continues. The ragi has also dried to make sure that there's no moisture left. I'm going to roast it and then grind it into a fine powder. One of the pending chore for long has been this repotting that I had to do. Few of my plants had outgrown its pot and also for better growth it's advisable to repot them every 6 months to a year. I didn't have a gardening gloves hence my hands were in a mess. I need to purchase one. I had almost decided not to keep plants after we moved into this house. My old house had so many plants which I had to give away when we moved. Because maintaining plants is a good hard work and with Zane coming I knew I wouldn't be able to give them time. Now seems like slowly I'm getting back to plant care and my love for plants has revived. Gardening can make you feel more peaceful and content. Just spending time around plants eases stress for many people. I guess that is why it is considered as a hobby. By the way, don't throw away these tiny petals when it comes off. Just put it in the mud upside down and you will see it started to grow again with new little florets. My house doesn't get any sunlight except for this utility area. I have kept most of my succulents here. This mini plant pot fits perfectly in this window slab and it looks pretty too. Rest of them goes in the balcony. It doesn't get any sunlight here but I guess these plants here are okay with minimal sunlight. I'm going to make this sweet crepes today. I've been thinking to make it for a while. It's called Pati Chapta Pitha in Bengali. It's basically like a sweet dosa with coconut stuffing. <laughs> Traditionally, it's made during Shangranti festival in January. I'm a little late for this, but never mind. <laughs> I will make the coconut filling in karai. I will add the grated coconut, few spoons of rawa and few spoons of jaggery along with pinch of cardamom powder, also half cup of milk to hold the filling well.
Ideally, there is khova or kheer which is made from thickening the milk and put on top of pati shapta. But I was too lazy and just used milk made instead. Kaya has been going for her skating classes on her own these days. She is also doing much better than before with her speed and techniques. I realized consistency and patience is the key to learning anything. It's almost 7 pm and I'm here to make us some dinner. Before we start with dinner, I'm going to soak some tur dal for tomorrow morning. I'm going to pack Kaya sambal rice for her lunch box. I will also cut few veggies and keep it so that it saves time in the morning. Also, soaking the tur dal makes sure it's cooked in just two whistles. This way, your vegetables will not be overcooked yet the dal will be well cooked. You can try this trick out in case you haven't already. Today we wanted to eat something fancy. I have been seeing this recipe of Thai green curry for so long but haven't made it. I will fry the chicken pieces first till it's brown, then take it out and add the chopped onions. Once it's fried well, I will add the Thai green curry paste. I got this one ready made but you can also make it at home. There are a lot of recipes for this on the internet. Then I will add all the cut veggies along with some lemon zest and a vegetable stock cube. Also some fish sauce, you can substitute that for soya sauce too and some lemon juice. I will also add some red chilli paste along with little bit of brown sugar. Then I will add water and chicken pieces and let it boil till everything is cooked. I'll finish it off with some coconut milk. I will also make some lettuce wraps with minced chicken and mushroom stuffing. And we had our mini weekday treat at home. Kaya's bus arrives before 7.30 or so. Every morning is very chaotic getting her and her lunchbox ready plus Zane also wakes up around the same time. I wanted to make sambar so that we can have that for breakfast too. I 
I'm also packing her some cheese uttapam for breakfast. Kaya isn't a fan of both. She will eat it though but would make faces. <laughs> I prefer to mix her sambar rice that way it's easier for her to eat. So for her today's lunch box I'm packing her some cheese uttapam for breakfast, sambar rice for lunch and yesterday's sweet crepes too. And our regular daily routine goes on. Jude loves this boring routine and so do we, I guess. After a certain age in your life, you love your boring routine and everything seems to be at peace with that boredom. I'm going to make Zane's breakfast. I switch his breakfast between ragi, rawa, rice or sabudana. I haven't introduced anything else yet. It's better to take it slow when introducing solids to your baby. Also, as much nutritious ragi is, it can cause constipation in babies. I prefer to give ragi either with banana or apple. Today, I didn't have any of both. So, I'm just going to give him ragi with dates puree. You can also add milk, either breast milk or formula if you want to, to make it a little more nutritious. And frighten Miss Muffin. It's here. It's here. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like we are cooking and feeding the entire day. There are so many mouths to feed. <laughs> I got a ready-made dosa batter. The dosas weren't coming out good. I used to make dosa batter at home before my pregnancy. Since I got pregnant with Zane, life seems to be too hectic. I want to resume to making my batters at home again. So for today's breakfast, we are having butter dosa with mixed vegetable sambar and coffee. That's all for today's one guys. I hope you found it helpful. I'll be back with a new video really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.